Hello and welcome back to another episode of Paint by Minis. As always, my name is Adam, and as the intro said, this is How to Paint the Ashes of Dawn, my own homebrew space marine chapter. Now this video is the final part of the homebrew space marine chapter series that I've done. If you haven't checked out the previous episodes, head to the channel now and I'll also put a link down in the description with the previous two episodes. In the first episode, we cover some tips on how to create your own homebrew space marines. In the second video I show you how to convert the Ashes of Dawn, and today's video is all about how to paint them. So without any further ado, let's jump to the desk and have a look. Now the first step to any decent paint job is a good cover of primer. In this instance I've gone for just a light grey primer, but honestly for this paint job it doesn't matter what you use. Just make sure you've got a good even coating on all of the model. So once the primer layer is good and dry, we're going to move on and do the first colour coat and that's going to be the grey armour. Now this is really just made up of one colour and that is dark rubber. There are a few reasons that I settled on the grey as the main armour colour. I knew going in that I wanted a grey because it just matches so nicely with the yellow. But when the name Ashes of Dawn got suggested to me, I knew grey would be right on theme. The lore that I made up in my head is that these guys are in mourning so they've donned a grey armour instead of their usual vibrant yellow. During the testing phase on this model I used a ton of greys and this turned out to be the one that I liked the most. It's a little bit obscure, it's from the Panzer Aces line which is a Vallejo colour system paint. I'm going to apply this with an airbrush just because it's a lot quicker but honestly a brush application of this is absolutely fine, the airbrush is not really required at all. So with all the grey done we're going to move on and start picking out the base colours for the rest of the model. The first of which is going to be black and for that I'm just using Vallejo model colour black. It's my favourite black, it's got a really good coverage and dries nice and matte. So the areas that we're going to be picking out are all of the cabling in between the joints, one of the knee pads, the grip on the gun, and the exhaust vents on the backpack. So black done, we can move on to the silver elements. So I ended up settling on a mix of my own making, one part Vallejo black, one part metal and alchemy heavy metal, and one part Vallejo metal colour. This ends up making quite a bluey toned metal and it adds really nice contrast against the warmer grey tones. So the parts that we want to paint with the metal colour are basically the weaponry and then pick up some details. So for the gun we're painting the lower portion of the bolter and the barrels. We're going to go ahead and paint the other exhausts on the backpack. Paint up in the exhaust in the backpack, leaving the black on the outside of them. We're also going to catch the grenades, the knife, some details on the antenna. And I did this off camera but I also did the vents attached to the helmet. This part can kind of be left up to your discretion, if you would like it to look a bit more uniform then leave slightly more grey material showing through and less metallic, or if you want it to stand out a little bit more just pick a few extra details out in the metal. So here's just a closer look at all the metal areas that I did end up picking out. Next colour up is going to be corn red and we're going to use this to pick out just a couple of details on the armour and mainly going to use it for the lenses in the eyes. It's a really nice desaturated red so it's not going to jump out too much and that's what we want. We want it to be quite subtle and fit in with the rest of the scheme. So with the red done we're going to move on to the leather portions. And for this we're going to use a age old trick that you might have seen in a few of my other videos and that's going to be basing with Xandru dust and when that's dry we're going to go over the top of it with a brown ink. So this is just going to be any pouches or holsters that we've got on the model. 
This is a really useful trick for model painting in general. Little details like this don't really take away or add too much to the model, so don't spend loads of effort painting them. With a Space Marine, as long as the armour or the weapons look good, people aren't really going to look at little things like grenades or holsters, so a simple base and ink job is good enough for me. Now that the leather's all done, we can move on to the main focal point of the model, and that's going to be the orange-yellow colour. I ended up using quite a specific mix of towel light ochre and a Liquitex acrylic ink called Yellow Orange Azo. This produces a really nice orangey-yellow colour, but if you don't have these to hand, I think Avalanche Sunset would look just fine as well. So this orange-yellow for us is going to be the primary accent colour that's going to really grab the eye, and we're mainly using it for squad markings. Now for me, I wanted quite a tactical look, so I ended up with some diagonal and vertical small stripes. I dot these around the model where I think they'll look good. In my headcanon, there's no real official placement, or they don't really denote anything, I haven't quite decided on that yet. But I tend to put at least one on the back and at least two or three on the front. I also think it looks really good on the weapon as well. Now we will also use this same orange yellow colour to block out a few big choice areas. The first of which is going to be the fin on the top of the helmet. This gets completely painted with the colour along with one of the hands. I usually choose the right hand of the model. The yellow hand is probably the most important bit of lore that I've come up with for these marines. As they all believe dawn has passed and they are in mourning, in tribute to their fallen primarch they paint their right hand yellow. This is because the only piece of dawn that has actually been recovered is his hand. It's to remind them that dawn is always with them. So after a good couple of coats of the yellow, this is what it looks like when it's all finished. As you can see, it really stands out against the grey armour. We've now also finished all of the main block colour of the model, so we can move on to picking out and refining some of these details before we move on to the final stages. And the first thing that we're going to work on is the metallics. Now I want the metallics to look cold compared to the rest of the model, so I'm going to give them a blue wash. And to do this I'm using Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamium Medium, and I'm just going to mix these one to one and apply a couple of layers of them. The reason that I tend to mix most washes with Lamium Medium is out of the bottle they can be a bit strong and overpowering and it's really easy for the wash to land where you don't want it to. The Lamium Medium just allows you a little bit more control, and it's better than using water as if you use water it can leave horrible tide marks where it dries. Whereas Lamia Medium is the same medium that is used in the washes itself, so you don't get any of that. So yep, it's just a case of applying this over any metallic area that we painted earlier. So now the base of the metallics has got more of a blue hue to it, we're going to go back now with a bright silver colour and just edge highlight any of the metallic areas. I'm using the same acrylic metal colour from Vallejo that I used in the earlier mix. This is the brightest component of that mix, so it's just going to give a real nice stark edge highlight to the metal. You can also add little scratches and chips to the metal to give it a worn look. This is good for any of you who are new to edge highlighting because it really doesn't need to be perfect. We're going for a rough metal look, so any imperfections are really good. So next up we're going to go and do our edge highlight on the armour. This is probably going to be the most time consuming part of this tutorial but honestly it goes by pretty quickly. We're going to use the base colour which is the dark rubber and we're going to mix this one to one with Celestra Grey. This is a nice cool toned grey which will add a bit of visual interest against the warmer base tone. Again we're going for a chipped look on this so if the edge highlight ends up a bit thick in places or ends up a little streaky or not looking great it's just going to add to the effect. So yeah you just want to run this all along all of the hard edges that will catch the light on the grey armour and then add in some chips and scratches across the armour faces as well. So this is what we're looking like now that we've worked our way around the model and picked up all of the edge highlights and added some rough detailing. Now we're going to just emphasise a few areas by using pure Celestra Grey. It's good to pick out just the very tops or the very edges of the armour panel, just to really emphasise the corners and the bits that would catch the most light. So now that all the high spots of the chipped armour are covered, we're going to move and do the opposite and that's reinforce the dark tones. So I'm just taking pure Vallejo Black and just stippling it in between some of the larger areas of damage. 
This is going to give it much more depth and give it the appearance that these chips have gone all the way through the ceramite layer into the under layers. So now all the highlighting and darkening, I suppose, is done. This is what the chipped armor looks like. As you can see, it's given it much more visual interest. It's not just large open areas of grey anymore. It's got some lots of little details that make it more pleasing to the eye. The only thing to do now is to repeat the same type of effects and we're just going to do this over the yellow areas. Now instead of applying any highlight to this because it's already quite a bright colour in contrast to the rest of the model, we're just going to do the darkening step where we're going to add in lots of little chips and scratches to break up the uniformity of the yellow. So this is the model basically done. The only step that we've got left to do now is a oil wash. Now if you've seen any of my other videos you know I'm a fan of a grim dark grime layer. So normally when I apply oil paints I'm applying them quite thickly, allowing them to set and then wiping them away creating a nice grimy surface look. But for these marines I wanted a bit of a cleaner appearance so I'm actually doing the traditional way of applying an oil wash which is through a panel line. This is where we're just thinning it down so much that it will run freely through all of the deep recesses, leaving the surface completely free of oil paints. So for this I'm using a black by Windsor & Newton, I've got a little dish to mix the paints in, an old tacky paintbrush I use just for oil paints, I've got a pipette which I've filled with mineral spirits for thinning down the paint, and I've also got a piece of paper towel which I'm just going to use to wipe away the excess from the brush and also clean up the dish after we're done. So when you're mixing this, go slowly. You don't want to add loads of thinner at once because you might thin it too much. The consistency that you want to go for is that it's moving nice and freely in the dish. You can test it against the sides of the dish to make sure that it's flowing how you like and also just apply it to a few spots on the miniature and see if it's pulling into the recesses as you want it to. And then it's just a case of going over the entire miniature and applying the oil wash into all of the recesses that you want. Now there are certain spots that I am going to apply this more thoroughly and that is to any metallic areas just to tone them down a little bit. Now one of the biggest features of oil washes I find is that if you make a mistake and you want to remove the oil it's so easy to do. Here I'm just using a makeup applicator to suck up any of the oil residue that's left on the actual panels of the Space Marine's leg. If you don't have makeup applicators you can just use your oil brush, just make sure that it's not got any oil paints in it and it's been freshly rinsed. You don't want it full of mineral spirits but you want it to have some residue left in it and you can just use this to mop up any mistakes as well. So I've left the model now a couple of hours just to completely dry and all that's left now is just to do a final varnish. This is optional, the oils are pretty well stuck in there but if you just want to make sure just do a nice matte varnish over the entire model. Here he is, all painted up in all his glory. Another fine marine to add to the roster of the Ashes of Dawn. And there we have it, the finished model. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and the whole series really. It's been really unique and enjoyable. I've never done a custom Space Marine Army before, so it's been a new experience. And I hope you've learned something along the way, or at the very least, you've got a cool new chapter to paint. So if you like what you've seen, stick around, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks a lot guys, take care.